we're going to do is basically what's left is the X carriage. So just kind of going over to our table here and to see what's left. We've laid out some thread cones here uh, as well as the carriage. So let's explain the, the different parts of the uh, parts of that here. Um, the X carriage itself. Um, is the bar that's responsible for all the left and right movement. Basically, it's this point that grabs uh, the, the hoop, the arms and anything, or the, or the cap system, and moves in the left-right direction, uh, done by this motor here. And then you've got a data, data and power cable that connects to the neck of the machine. So, and then this all con connects to the machine um, by two screws here. You can see where my uh, two fingers are pointing there. You notice they're kind of in diagonally opposite corners. So um, when you have your X carriage, um, then uh, you'll also want to uh, find the two uh, Phillips screws that are matched um, that will hold that in place. So let's go ahead and put that on the machine. Um, and finally, um, you've got uh, the tubular arm here, which holds most of the hoops except for the cap system. Uh, and that attaches to that uh, panograph uh, that screws on with uh, here. What we're, uh, with the two th thumb screws that are left. So um, placing the X carriage uh, in place, uh, what we'll do first is uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, look at the machine here and uh, let's prep that for receiving the X carriage. So uh, turning this around to view. So it's kind of rotating this on our wheeled uh, stand here. Uh, what we want to do is bring the uh, the Y platform, which rides on the Y rail, if it's all the way at the back, which it usually is coming for the factory, we're going to slide that out. This platform itself is what the X carriage um, is what the X carriage rides on. This the, this piece right here. So you can also see uh, in camera view here uh, there are two uh, screw heads. Basically, they look like uh, black screw heads that we're pointing to on the platform and there are uh, holes on the bottom of the X carriage that aligns to. So we'll go ahead and uh, align that on, uh, align the X carriage onto that. So we we'll grab the X carriage here like this. So you can see. And um, this, uh, the motor part here goes to um, my right or in the video on the far side of the machine. So we'll kind of install that like this. And again, we're gonna align that over the two screw heads that are on the platform. And it should sit by itself even when it's not screwed on. And it's kind of drop into place. Okay, so uh, that sits on there nicely. And um, it's gonna try and tip back because of the weight of the motor here. So we'll go ahead and um, start uh, the screws here. So what we'll do is uh, grab our Phillips screwdriver. And you can slide this out to any position that you're comfortable in. So um, bringing that out. The first one's on the front left here. So I'm going to put this on the machine's, uh, the operator's front left. Let's kind of snug that in place. And then we'll get the second screw, which is kind of a on the far side away from the camera uh, towards the back of the back right of the platform, the operator's back right. And again, we're holding the X carriage in place as we do so. And we'll go ahead and snug up both screws. And then once they're snug, we'll go ahead and tighten them down. So get a little bit more in camera here. So get these both snugged up. And then finally, on the other side of the machine, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, install the data cable here, uh, and that's just a matter of screwing in the two uh, uh, the two uh, handles here. So we'll take the data cable, and that plugs into the side of the neck. Now, the first thing we want to do is swing the uh, we want to swing the control panel up into the locked position. Um, but before we do, um, there's a small Phillips screw here that we want to remove temporarily. Swing the uh, control panel up, and finally replace the Phillips screw, but this time over this, uh, the sleeve that it uh, stops up against.
Okay, and that should hold the control panel up, the control panel arm. And we can adjust the angle of the control panel here, and uh, there are two screws on the back that you can uh, then you can then tighten down by hand uh, once it's set to the angle that you're comfortable with. And then uh, finally, now that that's clear, it's kind of rotating behind. You can see um, behind the neck right here, we'll take our uh, cable from the X carriage uh, and then just kind of plug that in. And turn the holding screws so that that doesn't come loose during sewing. Just kind of tighten them down, which of these uh, pins here, retaining pins, whatever we want to call them. Okay, so that's ready. And then uh, let's kind of uh, zoom out here a little bit and get a better view of the machine. So we want to make sure that the, uh, that the X carriage now moves uh, on its own with the power off, uh, with the machine uh, power off. Um, it should, uh, you should be able to move that uh, forward and backwards. And then finally, one last thing, uh, and then we're about assembled, and uh, the next thing we'll do is thread is that we want to remove the retaining collars which are on e either side of the head. Um, the head slides back and forth uh, along this bar and uh, these retaining collars um, help in shipping prevent the, the, the head from moving inadvertently and breaking the color change can. So that locking collar is in place here and also kind of swiveling this around to the other side of the machine. You can see this, a similar locking collar on the other side of the uh, bar here, again holding the machine and preventing it from moving left and right. So now we have our assembled journey machine and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, thread up the machine. The first thing we'll do is um, first thing we'll do is go ahead and put our thread cones in place in whatever order we want. Uh, this is needle position one here so in this case we'll put red on one and uh, Maybe uh, yellow, maybe related colors together, whatever you want to do. So that's red's uh, one, yellow's two. It doesn't matter which, but you can see just by needle numbers, this is one, two, three, and then four. There's a fifth position back here, and that's for the bob and winder. We're not going to occupy that right now. Um, there's no need to. Uh, uh, put thread there and then we'll just kind of continue around the needle five position here. Six and then seven. And then the, what we'll do is uh, uh, off camera, we'll go ahead and run the, uh, run the thread up through the thread, um, through the thread tree itself. And uh, we'll kind of show you how that's done. Kind of swivel the camera upwards so you can uh, be looking up into the uh, you can see the actual, the actual loops that the thread passes through. Start with the innermost, uh, the backmost cones first since they, have to, uh, since they have to pass through the most loops. It's a, a little bit easier since you are uh, not having to cross over uh, too many uh, thread cones. Run it through the appropriate loop. So since this is four, we'll We'll find or five. We'll find one, two, three, four, and five. The fifth, uh, uh, the fifth little clip up here, what what uh, Happy calls the upper rectifier there, here, and then we'll go and run the the next uh, thread through, and then uh, all we'll do is uh, repeat the same for the other side. Now rather than thread the whole machine ourselves uh, right here in front of the video, we'll uh, show you how to tie the thread cones onto the pre-threaded uh, uh, to, to onto the pre-threaded sewing head, um, which uh, will uh, uh, save us a lot of time. So uh, what we'll do is we want to looking at the sewing head itself. The uh, sewing head comes pre-threaded so that we don't have to so that we don't have to thread it and we'll take advantage of that. Uh, we'll cut, cut the knot at the end and I separate it into two different sides here. Uh, maybe needles one through four, take the threads for needles one through four and push them off to the side here. Uh, needles um, uh, five through seven off to this side so that they're not crossing over each other. 
And bringing that back, what we'll do is um, we're going to knot that off, um, starting with the uh, starting with our uh, innermost uh, needle here, to uh, so we're not again crossing over it any more than we need to. I'll take needle five, and you can also start from the other side if you want to. Um, cut the ends uh, so they match, and if you can tie a nice stable square knot. Um, in this case, right over left, left over right. And if you have a nice stable knot there, then um, you can actually pull that all the way down through uh, through the through the eye of the needle, and then that'll conclude uh, the way we thread the machine. And uh, we'll just go ahead and pull the uh, thread out from where it's docked underneath uh, in the uh, thread holder assembly, and just kind of pull that down. And you'll see that that should, if properly threaded, that should now pull cleanly through all the way, even the knot all the way through to the eye of the needle.